loosened. One of the most important types is the longshore current, which flows parallel to the coastline. This current acts like a conveyor belt, picking up sand from one part of the beach and carrying it down the coast, a process known as longshore drift. This is why sand often accumulates at one end of a beach while the other end erodes. The type of land a coast is made of is another huge factor. Think about it. It's much easier to wash away a sandcastle than it is to break apart a solid rock. The same principle applies to coastlines. Coasts made of soft materials like sand, silt and clay, such as those found in deltas or on barrier islands, are far more vulnerable to erosion than coasts made of hard, crystalline rocks like granite. The geological structure of the land matters too. For instance, if layers of rock in a cliff are tilted downwards towards the sea, large blocks can more easily slide off once they are undercut by waves. The shape of the coastline itself, whether it's a straight line or a series of bays and headlands, also influences how wave energy is focused or spread out, leading to different rates of erosion along its length. Finally, one of the most significant natural drivers of coastal erosion today is sea level rise. For thousands of years, Global sea levels have been relatively stable, but now they are rising at an accelerating rate, primarily because of climate change. As the planet warms, two things happen. Glaciers and ice sheets melt, adding more water to the oceans, and the seawater itself expands as it gets warmer. This is called thermal expansion. A higher sea level means that waves can reach further inland, attacking higher parts of cliffs and dunes. It also makes coastal areas more vulnerable to storm surges, which are temporary increases in sea level caused by storms. This combination means that the erosive power of the ocean is being brought to bear on parts of the coastline that were previously out of reach.